So here I've written down a set of data points and a curve that we want to fit our data to. Notice that this is not a linear curve. It has two functions. These are independent functions. And these coefficients are unknown. So when we set up this problem, our matrix A, in this case, I'm going to put the values of the square root of x, for instance, in the um, first entry. And in the second entry, I'll put the values of x. So this is going to be our matrix A. So the square root of x, if we go through our values of x here, the square root of x is going to be 0 for the first entry, 1 half for the second entry, 1 for the third, and then 3 halves for the last one. And then for the values of x, we just write the values of x. And this is going to be our matrix A. Now, let me also write A transpose just so we have it here, so it'll be easier to compute. So we have 0, 0, 1 half, 1, 3 halves. OK. And what is our vector y? That's just these values right here. So I'll even write that over here. And our C is our vector of unknowns, and this is AB. It has to be written in this order based on the way that we wrote our matrix A. So let's compute A transpose A. Hopefully the algebra isn't, the arithmetic isn't too bad. So I'll try to be as careful as possible so that I don't make any careless errors. So this is going to be, first of all, it's going to be a two by two matrix. And here we have, we're multiplying the first row with this first row. So essentially we're just taking the dot product of this vector with itself. It's a fourth plus one. So that's five fourths plus nine fourths. That gives us 14 fourths, which is 7 halves. Then we take the dot product of this vector with this one. So this gives us 1 eighth plus 1. So that's 9 eighths. And then, unfortunately, we have 27 eighths. So 27 eighths plus 9 eighths gives us 36 eighths. And if we divide that by 4, I think we get 9 halves, the numerator and the denominator. This is going to be a symmetric matrix, so this is also 9 halves. And then the last term that we compute is the dot product of the second vector with itself. So that gives us 1 16th plus 1. So I'll actually have to write this one out. Um, so 1 16th plus 1, which is 16 over 16, plus 81 over 16, if I did that correctly, yes, 81 over 16. And this gives us 97, 98, 98 over 16. Um, looks like, I don't know if 4 is a factor, probably not. 2 is a factor for sure. So this gives us 49 over 8. Unfortunately, that seems to be the best we can do. So this is A transpose A. Now let's compute A transpose Y. So we'll take this matrix with this one. Is it going to be simple? Um, it's a fourth plus five fourths, which is six fourths, plus, oh, those, those seem to cancel, plus one. So six fourths plus one is 10 fourths, which is five halves. And then the second entry is 1 eighth plus 5 fourths, 1 eighth plus 5 fourths plus 18 over 12. This is 1 eighth plus 10 eighths plus 9 over 6, 23 over 8. OK, so now we have our matrix. We have this matrix Y. We can try to um, solve this system. And let's compute the inverse of A transpose A. 
By the way, these, um, in this case, these vectors are linearly independent, so we know that this um, has an inverse. It's 1 over the determinant. These numbers are terrible. <laughs> but this is the best, you know, it's, it's actually generally hard to get really nice numbers if you're trying to match to functions that um, are not necessarily linear or quadratic. So once you work out the arithmetic, when we take the determinant of this matrix, we get 16 over 19. And then the adjugate of this matrix, so it's 49 eighths, negative 9 halves on the off diagonal, and 7 halves on this part. So then when we apply that matrix to this vector, What do we get? We can even cancel some of these, right? So this is going to be um, 8 over 19. And let's write this matrix is 49 over 4, negative 9, negative 9, and 7. Apply to this vector here, 5 halves, 23 eighths. So in fact, we can even knock down another factor of Two, so this gets rid of that four, and that's a four. So after you multiply all of this out, you work through all the arithmetic, you end up getting two, negative one. I'll spare you those details because it's a little bit frustrating to do this right now. It'll be much easier for you to pause, make sure that you get the same exact answer. So this tells us that the coefficients a and b are two and minus one half. Let's just see, to s see if this is a reasonable um, answer. So if we take this function and we try to plot it, so therefore y equals 2 square root of x minus x. Let's plug in a few values to see what we get. When we plug in 0, we get 0, so we're here. When we plug in, let's say, 1, we are also at 1. 2 minus 1 is 1, so we're here. And then what other numbers is this nice for? Let's say um, if x is 4, um, then this becomes 4 minus 4, which is 0. So we end up getting here. Maybe even for, let's see, a fourth, is this going to be a nice number? If x is a fourth, this is a half, so this is 1. 1 minus a fourth is going to be 3, uh, 3 fourths. So at x equals 1 fourth, which is roughly here, we'll be at 3 fourths. That's kind of pretty high compared to this. That's maybe around here. Um, what's another value? So notice that what's happening is we have some vec the function looks something like this. And then it starts to go down. So if we filled out a few more points, we we our function would end up looking something like this. So it actually fits these data pretty well. So this is an example of how you would use the method of least squares to actually fit your data to a linear combination of a certain set of functions where your coefficients in front of those functions are unknown and independent.